This video is sponsored by cashout.gg where you can trade your skins for Bitcoin, PayPal, etc. So go check them out. Link is in the description. But back to the video, I'm going to be showing you an Oblivion HD style trap base, like how to build it. And at the end, I'll show you guys a different circuit than this one where it's fully automated with the heartbeat sensors. Here's the build cost for the base itself, which is just like four triangles. Um, you place them like this, you throw some door frames all the way around it, the double door frames. And then on the inside is where all of our electricity is going to go. So you're going to want a doorway right there just to access it. If you go watch his videos, he doesn't build it like this because he's playing on a modded server and he can just slash remove the walls whenever he needs to. So if you're going to do this in vanilla, follow the way that I build it here. If you're going to do it on modded, you can just wall everything off on the inside. You don't need any doorways or ceilings open or anything like that. But if you are going to be doing this on a server without slash remove, you are going to need to have doorways where I have them placed. And um, if you want to like access your solar panels, you're going to have to leave a hole in the roof. Um, but you could just build twig on the outside. The really uh, the only place you really need a hole is in the middle on the floor that we're standing on right now. You'll see that I leave that floor open, but I do put a ceiling on the top. On the roof, we're going to place some solar panels and we're going to hide them with these quarter walls. So you'd have to be above it to even see that there's solar panels on this base. Um, the minimum is two, but you could have a couple more. I put three just because I can in creative mode and it looks nicer. So it's up to you. The minimum is two and then uh, you would end up spending less high quality that way. The reason you would want two is just so that when you turn it off, if the sun is on one side of the base and it's not reaching the other solar panel, you're still going to charge your battery a little bit. But most of the time this is going to be off and your battery is going to be charging because when you turn it on, that's the only time that it uses power. So you could really get away with one solar panel with this and it would still work just fine because the circuit will only be active for a few seconds. And that's only when somebody comes around and you flip the switch on. After that, we're just going to hook this up to a battery with this root combiner. For three of them, we're going to need two uh, root combiners. If you have two solar panels, you only need one root combiner and we're just going to hook them up. Once we have everything hooked up, we can take the output of the root combiner and attach it to a large battery, which we're going to place downstairs. The reason we're using a large battery and not small batteries is because it would be more difficult to wire up multiple small batteries than it would to wire up just one large battery. And we need the large battery to disperse even power between the six doors that we're trying to power. So the large battery uh, is really not something too difficult to find while you're out farming monuments. You'll find them in elite crates pretty often and you can sometimes find them in the regular crates as well. So it's not too difficult to get your hands on one of those, but it is a level two workbench uh, item. Now we can grab our main switch and the electrical branch, which will split the power from our large battery to our splitters. We're putting the main switch in this building for now, and then we're going to move it to a separate little base that we're going to build later on where we will watch from afar when strangers come by to get slaughtered by this trap. So um, we're going to put this electrical branch down and connect it to our main switch. And then we're going to set the output to 40, just an easy number to remember since the electrical branch and the switch both use one power. We're going to need to set it below 50 uh, because the battery outputs 100 units of power. Now down here, we're going to put two splitters just so it's easy to connect them to our doors without having to expose them to the outside. Whenever we open the doors, we're going to hide them on this inner triangle and then connect both of the splitters inputs to the outputs of the electrical branch. Now we can put all of our garage doors down and place our door controllers and make sure the doors are closed when you are um, pairing the door controller to the garage doors. Make sure you do not place the door down for the inside of the base yet, just because um, you might accidentally pair one of these door controllers to the single door when you do not want to do that. Um, and then we can wire up each of our door controllers to our splitters and then uh, make sure that you're hiding the wires as much as possible from sticking through the garage doors. Uh, you want to make sure when you're wrapping it around that you're wrapping it towards the center of the base and not like outside somehow. I'm not sure how you would accomplish that, but just make sure all your wiring is as tidy as possible and sticks to the inside of this triangle.
So since we left that main uh, power switch in this base, we can test our circuit before we build our observation base off to the side, which is where we're going to transfer the switch to. So we're just going to hook up this last door controller right here, and then we're going to go and test to make sure our circuit works upstairs with the main switch. So if all your doors are open, you're going to have to turn it on and then turn it off again, and all your doors should close. And that means when we turn it on again, all of the doors will open simultaneously with one switch you're opening six garage doors at the same time. We're going to now move our switch. Um, we're just going to disconnect it completely, leave everything else hooked up. And um, we're going to see how far away we can build by connecting um, a line from the battery and just running away from the base. I think it's 28 meters, 26 meters that you can go, or in-game units, whatever. You want to make sure you go far enough away that the base is inconspicuous, but make sure that you're close enough to where you can still uh, connect the wire from your switch to your battery. Build yourself a little base however you want, uh, with a little window or something pointed towards the base that you can tell when someone's coming up to it and then um, you'll be able to flip the switch in safety uh, and maybe people won't even notice that it's coming from this base if you can hide your wires well enough you could just build a huge pumpkin patch outside or build in like an area with a lot of bushes and trees so it's hard to see the wires um, because out in an open area like this it's kind of obvious that there's wires going to the base but you can kind of put them through the ground if you like build your base up on a hill uh, but there might be a little chunk of wire that sticks out right here that you're gonna have to cover up with something like sleeping bags or fire pits or pumpkins are probably the best option to hide the wiring completely and then once you get the output of the switch connected back to the electrical branch you will have your circuit completed again uh, make sure you do your wiring a lot neater than I did I'm just doing it to show you how to connect it back up once you build your observe observation base um, but you'll see here, I just kind of stuck it on there without making it look nice from the outside. So now that we've got our circuit completed, we can add our auto turrets. And this uh, the doors on the inside of the base can be added now, these single sheet doors. So when you're placing your auto turrets down, you want to push them up to the wall as close as possible since we have a triangle here. We want them to try to cover as much of a 360 view as possible. So by placing them closer together, they have a wider range of view to shoot people from. And then they have less of a chance of shooting the door frames right in front of them as well. But that is a blind spot. If somebody is able to run up directly to the door frame, the auto turret might not shoot them. But now that we've got everything done, we can control the circuit from our base with one switch and all the doors open to reveal our three auto turrets that can either protect you during an online raid or whatever devious plans you have to use this for. On the screen right now is a fully automatic version of this. This is the circuit. It requires a lot more power. You might even want to switch out the solar panels for a windmill, but you see this one is pretty simple. You could also exchange the ore gates for electrical branches, but I think this is probably the easiest and cheapest way to build the fully automatic version of this, which just uses three heartbeat sensors that you can hide with some pumpkins, or maybe uh, corn would be the best option to hide those with. Uh, you just put them on the outside in the middle of the triangles. But yeah, if you guys want me to show you how to build that circuit in a separate video, let me know by leaving a like on this video and a comment below. Please subscribe if you're new here and uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell to not miss out on any new videos in the future. And thank you guys for watching as always. I'll catch you next time.